SpaceX launched 165 rockets in 2025. ISRO, on the other hand, just launched five. In fact, in its 50 years of existence, ISRO has launched a total of 104 rockets, which is still less than SpaceX's number of launches in 2025 alone. And the biggest reason behind this is the reusability of rockets. But this could change in 2026. Indian startups are now planning to launch their own reusable rockets, and we might get our first one as early as this year. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup news show. I'm Pankaj, your host, and you're watching Backstage with Millionaires, a channel that's also part of Zerodha Zero One Network. See, 2025 was the biggest year ever for Indian space tech funding. Indian space tech startups raised a total of $175 million, which is more than double what they raised in 2024. And we have built some serious innovation in the space, from building the world's highest resolution hyperspectral satellites to making the world's first privately built rocket with a fully 3D printed engine. In just a short span of time, Indian space tech startups are solving the toughest problems that have existed in the sector. But for all that progress, one thing has been missing, and that is reusable rockets. And that's what makes the next 12 to 18 months so interesting, because multiple Indian startups are now working actively on building it. And we can see India's first reusable rocket as early as mid of 2026. But before we get there, it's worth understanding why reusable rockets are so hard to build, and why almost no one in the world has been able to pull this off successfully except SpaceX. See, the modern day rockets which are used to put satellites in orbit have two stages. The first stage is the biggest and most powerful stage of a rocket. This is basically fire set liftoff and provides the main thrust needed to lift the rocket off the ground. And when you talk about reusability, it's usually to bring this first stage safely back on Earth and then use it again for future missions. And you would have seen it with SpaceX doing it again and again. And the reason it's so difficult is because this process of launching a rocket up in the space, then separating the two stages, then flipping back the first stage 180 degrees, then again restart its engines in near vacuum, survive re-entry at hypersonic speed, and finally control its descent and land it vertically with an absolute precision. This process is just far, far more complicated than it looks. And this is exactly why only two companies in the world, SpaceX and Blue Origin, have been able to do it. Now, for India, we have built one of the most efficient space programs in the world. But it is only now that Indian companies and ISRO are looking at solving reusability. See, before SpaceX, ISRO was one of the most affordable options for a launch. Depending on the mission, ISRO's launch cost worked out to roughly $4,500 to $5,000 per kilogram of payload. But SpaceX has reduced that number to as low as $2,500 to $3,000 per kilogram. And this is what Indian companies now want to change. They want to take back this market from SpaceX. Companies like Agnikul Cosmos, for example. In 2024, the company made history by launching India's first private rocket powered by a fully 3D printed semi-cryogenic engine. Then, in 2025, it raised over $30 million, and now their ambition is to build a fully reusable rocket. And unlike SpaceX, which currently reuses only the first stage of its rockets, Agnikul is working towards reusing both stages. That means recovering not just the stage 1 booster, but also the second stage of the rocket, which has to survive orbital velocities and extreme re-entry heating, which makes this problem exponentially harder to solve. But if Agnikul can pull this off, it could significantly undercut SpaceX and potentially become the go-to launch provider for small and medium satellite missions worldwide. Then there is another startup called EtherealX, which is taking an even more aggressive stance. Instead of treating reusability as a future upgrade, the company is designing its launch systems with reuse as a core constraint from day one. And then we have Astrobase Space Technologies, which raised $10 million in their seed funding in July 2025 with the goal of building a reusable medium lift launch vehicle targeting a first launch around 2029. And along with these private startups, ISRO is working on it as well. They have been quietly working on its reusable launch vehicle program, with autonomous landing experiments already completed. And next will be orbital tests. And ISRO is not really racing with these startups. It's working along with them to crack this problem together as a country. See, the global space launch market is worth around $24 billion currently and will reach over 70 billion by the early 2030s. And currently, SpaceX dominates this space with over 82% market share in 2025. So if Indian companies crack this, not only will it be a great national achievement, 
It will also unlock massive commercial deals for the country. All right, next up, Lat Aerospace conducted their first test flight, which ended up in their prototype aircraft crashing into the ground. But Dipinder Goel called it a success. And that's because the team had already run the simulations and it had suggested that the flight had already flagged structural issues in the prototype. And the team knew a crash was likely. But the aircraft was able to demonstrate its core objective, ultra short takeoff and landing capability, which is why it was still a success. According to Dipinder, making a plane take off is only 20% of the problem. Making it land safely is where the work lies. And the company has already moved on to building LAT-1 V0.2, which is being designed to complete a full end-to-end -end mission. Now, to understand why Dipinder and his co-founder Surbhi Das are even attempting something this ambitious, you have to look at the problem they are trying to solve. In a recent conversation with Raj Shamani, Dipinder explained that LAT Aerospace is built around a radical idea of eliminating the need for traditional airport infrastructure infrastructure altogether. The company is working on small aircrafts that can take off and land within 20 to 50 meters, making it possible to operate from compact air stops inside or near big cities. See, if today, if you have to go from Delhi to Chandigarh on a flight, it takes you a similar amount of time as driving. Since you first have to go to the airport, then wait there for an hour, then fly, and finally from the next airport to your location. And all of this takes four to five hours. And that's why Light Aerospace wants to enable direct point to point travel where small 6 to 8 seater aircraft can take off close to where people live and land close to where they are going. Alright, moving on to some quick news updates. Orbited Aerospace, a Bengaluru-based space tech startup, is about to make history. Their satellite refueling payload IUISAT will launch on January 12th. And if it works, IUISAT will prove that satellites don't have to be thrown away once they run out of fuel. They can actually be refueled and serviced in space, and which means it will last longer, cost less to replace, and create less space junk. It's basically laying the groundwork for India to build a whole new business around fixing and maintaining satellites in orbit. Alright, next up, Practo is taking its India-built healthcare platform global. After a strong entry into the UAE, the company has now expanded into the US. And in just six months, Practo says that its US traffic grew nearly six-fold to over 300,000 monthly active users. Also, they have over 200,000 doctors listed on the platform and an annualized GMV run rate of more than $75 million. According to the company, their strongest traction so far is in dental and mental health segment. Alright, next up, Simple Energy has launched its Gen 2 electric scooter lineup, including updated versions of the Simple One and One S, plus a new long-range model called Simple Ultra. Their big highlight is the Ultra's IDC range of 400 kilometers, which puts it among the longest range electric scooters in India right now. Simple Energy is also rolling out a lifetime warranty on the motor and battery, as the company looks to boost sales in 2026 and move towards profitability ahead of a planned IPO in 2027. Alright, now let's move into the first funding news segment for 2026. This week, Indian startups raised a total of $177 million, which is significantly higher than $66 million they raised last week. And now let's look at some of the companies that have raised funds this week. The first one I want to talk about is Agritech startup called Aria.ag, which is like a full-service middleman for farmers and grain buyers, helping farmers store their harvest properly, get loans against it, and sell at better prices instead of dumping everything right after the harvest when the prices crash. And they have raised 725 crore rupees or almost $80.3 million in their Series D round. Following that, we have Bengaluru-based even healthcare, which is like a monthly Netflix subscription, but for your health. You pay a flat fee and get unlimited doctor visits, free tests, checkups, and even hospital coverage up to 1 crore rupees. And they have raised $20 million. After that, we have a Hyderabad-based space tech startup called Take Me To Space, which builds small and affordable satellites with built-in AI brains. And they process data in space, so students, researchers, and even small companies can run experiments without needing massive budgets or ground stations. And they have raised $5 million in their seed round. Next, we have a Bengaluru-based prop tech startup called Flint, which runs a managed apartment model where they basically take high-end apartments on lease from the owners, style them like designer show homes, and then rent them out to professionals with zero brokerage. And they've raised $2.5 million in their pre-series A round. And finally, we have Oso, which is a one-stop orthopedics cleaning chain that handles everything from your first consultation to full recovery for things like bone and joint issues like arthritis, sports injuries, and back pain. And they've raised 4 crore rupees. Alright, that's all the startup news I have for you this week. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.